Okay. So what I'm going to show you how to make is um, I'm using my 5 8 inch my 5 8 inch gauge. Excellent. You can use your large gauge flex seal loom for this as well. Simply use my conversion. All right. Super easy there. Now, I have made a leg warmer. And while it doesn't look like much on by itself, it's really cute on. Okay. And if you want to kind of see what it looks like on, you can stick your hand there. All right. Now, what you're going to find is I've left it airy in here. And the reason being is the, uh, the crocodile stitch will make it warmer than you expect. Okay, as you can see there. Now, I will tell you this. It will use a whole skein of this Color Play Meadow Song. It will use a full skein of it. Because the crocodiles eat, the scales eat a lot. And this is a number six yarn. And it's 60 yards. So, let's say you're using the Lions brand Hometown USA instead of the Yarn B Color Play Meadow Song, you'll definitely want to get two skeins. Okay. And it pretty much takes up the exact amount of skein. Um, you may have a yard left over. Um, there. Okay. Now, what you'll want to do is we're going to start with the ankle to mark up too. Now this is for um, basically for a child. If you're wanting to do this for an adult, go ahead and start out with 24. Work your way up to I believe 36. And um, you just want it to be indivisible by four. You can make this more or less depending on your leg size. This is a guide and um, it, it does not tend to change as much. All right, so we're going to do a chain cast on. All right, and I'm starting off with 16 pegs. All right. So I'm starting off with 16 pegs, doing a chain cast on. Then I'm going to do a rib stitch, okay? And my rib stitch is going to be a knit to purl to, right? Because it's indivisible by four, and you get more spring with a knit to um, purl to. Okay, so if you know what I'm talking about, you can go ahead and pause the video, do your chain cast on, and then you want to knit two, purl two for a total of 15 rows. Now, if you don't quite know what I'm doing here, it's okay. Chain cast on will give you the place to be able to slip it on your foot. But the rib stitch will make it where it actually sits nicely around the ankle. And we are going to be doing an increase. You do not have to do the increase if you do not want to. You can go ahead and start this thing out, but it may take more yarn than you expect. So keep that in mind. And you may want more yarn if you want your leg warmer to be bigger, taller. Um, that's okay too. You just do more of your 16 row repeat. Okay. That's all. Okay. And I always like to just stick that last loop over there. Okay. So. It's knit two, one, two, curl two. So here's one, two. Okay. 
Okay, send it to one, two, and total two. One, two. Do this for fifteen rows. Your rib stitch, okay. So round and round for 15 rows, and then when we come back, we'll do our increase. Now, if you don't want to do the increase, you do not have to. If you're wanting to start larger, you can. This is a guideline. You can do this and change the size up. It's still keep it indivisible by four. If you keep it indivisible by four, you can easily change the size of this, make it longer, make it shorter, that kind of thing. So this is a guide in order to be able to adjust your size. This is for my daughter, she's four, which is why the ankle's a little small, okay? And I only did three, I only did one and a half of the crocodile stitch. I didn't even do a full two steps. But if you're doing for an adult, you may wanna do two sets or three sets. And you may wanna start out bigger, okay? But this is just a guide and um, just to go from there, okay? So go ahead and do a two by two rib stitch for a total of 15 rows, and then when we come back, I'll show you how to get started on the crocodile stitch. Okay, so we have done our nice rib stitch here, all right. We need to increase by two. Well, actually, we only need to increase by one. Excuse me, on each corner. All right. So you knit and knit, which means you um, don't really have to worry about the rib stitch at this point, the scale is going to cover it. So, you know, let's see if I can get this to focus better. Okay, so I knitted two, and I have my working yarn. Let's see if I can get this. My working yarn inside the loom now. When it comes to this purling stuff, I'm going to find my first stitch, which is here. Okay, I'm going to back the working yarn in front, and then I'm going to hold the original stitch down while I put this back over. Okay. Now, you find the stitch you just made. Let's see if we got a little connection here. Okay. You find the stitch you just made. You pull it through. Okay. Let me actually in these corners sometimes. Alright. So. You got it back. You put your stitch you just made there. You knit. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to find the first and you're going to pull it back. The working yarn in the front, and here's where you have to hold down your original stitch. Make sure you get all that stitching back over. Okay, now you need to find your new. Stitch which is right here, and you'll know it's your new stitch because you can pull it. Yeah. Sorry, this is fun trying to move the camera around. Right, at this point, you want to loosen the shaft. Okay. 
then what I like to do is go in and tighten my stitches. Okay. Then you can knit your way over again. The rib stitching doesn't quite matter at this point because you are going to be hiding it by a scale. We need to increase to the 24. Okay, I'm going to try to show you this one more time. Okay. I'm going to pick up this right here. You see? I'm going to pick it up. Pull it back. Hold down the original stitch as you put that back. Okay? That one wants better. Okay, and then you find your you know it's good because it moves around. The stitch you just made. And then you can your way over. You do the same thing. And you find stitch there. Now if you have other ways you like to increase on the loom, go for it. This is just my preference. You're just needing to increase and pull it back. Okay. And move. And I would suggest tightening. And then knit your way over. Okay. So you're going to do this on this one and this one. And then you should be back at your starting point. When you get there, then knit your way around, okay? So you're going to increase and increase here. And then you're going to get around here. You're going to just knit your way around. When we come back, we'll be ready to start our scales, okay? So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, we are now ready to do our scales. Okay. So, we're going to skip this first peg. You can knit it or you can skip it. It's up to you. And if you want to knit it, you can. But this counts as four, all right? So you can knit. Now, what you want to do is you want to create a loop. Just loop, all right? Now, push all this down because you don't want to touch any original stitches. You're going to loop that thing behind, you see? it. All right. You're going to grab it, pull through. Grab it, pull through. So it's a chain cast on. Let's done it before. You want to do six. So you're going to do one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Just place it on there. Alright. Alright. So you do a chain cast on. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to knit your way over. And this counts as row one. Alright. You're going to do this for seven rows. And depending on how you want this, you can either do um, a seed stitch or you can do a garter stitch. So I'm going to do a garter stitch. And on these pegs where there's an original stitch, do not touch them. All right? You don't touch them. So you slip the first one and pearl your way over. Okay. 
and you're going to slip and knit your way over. This is row three. And you're going to go for seven rows. Going to slip that first stitch, curl your way over. Again, you can do this as a seed stitch. You can do it as any stitch that doesn't make it curl. You do a whole bunch of knit stitches that will curl, and then you won't have this nice laying flat scale. Okay? So always keep that in mind when doing these patterns. Keep in mind, you notice I'm not touching these stitches. Alright. Then we have six. Slip it, and then we have row seven. Now this is where you complete your scale. Okay. Again, we're not touching those original stitches. Keep that in mind. All right. Here's how you want to do it. Wrap around that next peg. You can go ahead and you can toss that loop over if you'd like. going to send it through the bottom curl wise. Okay, you can send it through knit wise if you want. I just happen to do it curl wise. Still not touching those original stitches. Alright. Never touch those original stitches. Right? Or you screw up your scale. Your scale is like working separately. Just keep pulling it through in a pearl way. You can do it as a single and then pull it through, or you can do it as a double and pull it through. To get myself started, I usually pull it through as a double. Okay. And the last one. Now, you're going to grab your loop here. You got it? Grab it. Take the loops you created off. All six. Alright. Now you're back down to your original stitches. What you want to do is you want to pull it. Be aware of your stitching. Okay? Now. scale. You see that? Nice. Pretty scale. Got it? Okay. Then, we're going to toss that loop over, and then you're going to knit one start again. Okay. Then you're going to create six more. Alright. So, if you have these here, then you need a space on each side so that you can offset. Alright. So what you're doing is you're taking up four. Alright. So, 
we have these two stitches and then you have these two stitches. So what you want to do is you want to knit one more. Right? And this is going to be this stitch like you just did here. Yeah. Alright, let's pull it right down. So we knitted that one, that one, that one, that one. So you're gonna knit four after that. So then we get one, two, three. Alright. You can do this on the round loom um, and just not bother with the increase section. Alright, so you're going to create that loop and you're going to pull through. Create the loop, create the loop, create the loop, pull through. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. Again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go working back and forth, not touching this one, because this one right here is playing what this one played on the previous scale. Okay. So when you finish your scale, which is what these two things are, all right, then you're going to knit four. Okay, because you're going to knit this one, two, three. Right. Then you're going to start your chain and you're going to go back and forth, not touching these original stitches. Do not touch them. Leave them alone. Alright? Because if you don't, if you don't leave those alone and you add them in, you're going to mess up and you're going to start all over again. You don't want to start all over again. Okay? So, back and forth, seven rows, wrap, and then pull through. So, if you need help, go back to the original, go back to this section of the video, and follow it again. It doesn't matter which section you're on, you just need to remember not to touch those original stitches, okay? So you're going to do that all the way around. And because you're using four stitches to complete a set, what you should have is um, six of these little scales, okay? You should have six little scales, all right? So go ahead and pause the video and complete that much. Okay, so as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of those. Now, the next thing you want to do is just purl your row. So, you're going to purl your row. Okay. After you purl your row, then you're going to, um, so you're going to purl your way around, and then what you're going to do is you're going to knit for three rows, okay? So after you purl your way around, you're going to knit for three rows, so just knit, 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 round and round, three rows, okay? Then when we come back, I actually think that completes the set. Um, but when we come back, I'll need to show you how to stagger this next so that you can do your next six where the um, scales fall in between the previous scales. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, purl the row, and then knit for three rows. So purl a row, knit for three rows. Pause the video, get this much done. Okay, as you can see, I have completed those rows, and I'm now ready to start my crocodile stitches again. Okay, so, our scale started here. We need to do a scale that's going to be here. So, now this is going to work. Knit this one. So you're going to knit two, then you're going to knit one more, then you're going to start. And so I'm not having to work around this, I'm going to come out this way. So, create your loop. One, two, three, four. And then 
six by Stoner. This is going to work the same as it has with every one that we've done. Basically what I've shown you how to do is stagger. So you cast on, knit, and when I do this it makes it easier to not have to worry about original stitches. Okay. And then curl my way back. Knit. Pearl. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wrap around previous peg to the scale, knit over. as you created to make the scale. And knit three, one, two, three. Your next scale should be on these two. Okay. 
So now you're going to cast on. And at this point, it works the same as the previous. Okay, so there's three, four. these stitches down here. Do not touch them. All right. You should be done. You should have a scale right here. Okay. So go ahead, pause the video, complete your row of scales, and then we can come back and I can show you that you'll need to do just like we did here. This kind of lacing here that you've done with the rows. You're going to repeat that. Okay, so you can go back in the video and you can repeat that section where you're doing the um, lacing thing. So you're going to go in and do crocodile stitch all the way around. Then you're going to knit the row and then you're going to do that little um, knit and then move and then knit over knit all the way around, then you're going to yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, then um, you're going to curl, and then you're going to knit through the rows, I believe, and um, so anyway, you just go back in part of the video what I do after I do my crocodile stitch, and you're going to do that right after you do this one, Then you're going to go back, and you're going to do the first row, of crocodile stitch and then you're going to stop okay and what that's going to do is get you to the point so at this point what we've done is we've done this and we need to do We've done this row, we've done these series right here, and we're here. We're completing these scales. As you can see, you do it again, right through here. Okay. And then you're going to do another row of scales like you did down here. So you do your original scales. You go back in the video and do that. And then you stop. And then from that point on, we're going to do rib stitch okay and i'll explain that in a minute but what you're going to do row of crocodile okay that we've started here down the stagger then you're going to go back in the video and show how to do the rows in between and then you go back in the video again and do the first row of crocodile stitch so that you go back to the staggering and then you stop come back to the video and i'll show you how to finish up this leg warmer. Okay. Okay, where we were at was working on this row of scales. I told you to go in and repeat this section here in between this first row and the second row of scales. Then go in and do this row of scales again. So that should get you to here, to where you have three rows of scales. Mm -hmm. So this is what it should look like. Okay. Now when you wear it, you'll have air because this yarn's kind of thick. All right. So what's next? A rib stitch. All right. And so we're going to shovel that back down in there. And I'll explain what to do next. So, you're going to knit two, purl two. All 
the way around. And you're going to do that for a total of anywhere from 10 to 13 rows. So you're going to do this rib stitch of knit 2, purl 2, all the way around, round and round, for 13 rows. And this should be where you end up at, okay? At this point, then we'll do a special bind off that allows for stretch, but has a clean edge. So it's a modified bind off that I got from Luma Hat, okay? So that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing a modified bind off, but um, it's a knit two, purl two, and you're going to do that for anywhere from 10 to 13 rows. And then when we come back, we will bind off. Okay, so pause the video and get that much done. Okay, so I've done my rows and now I am ready to bind off. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to need pegs one and two. Then I'm going to take back the second one to peg one. And then I'm going to toss the bottom of the boat. Then I'm going to get pegs one and two. Put that second leg back, put it on peg one, and toss the bottom leg over. Move over. Knit pegs one and two. Make the second leg over, toss the bottom one. There we go. Okay. And what this is doing is this allows you a loose bind off but still clean and this is outside where the calf needs to be so the calf is a little bigger than the ankle okay so go ahead and finish your bind off and you will now have made yourself a mermaid leg warmer. Okay. So there's your scales and everything. And that's what it looks like. You know where it is an warm one or two. That is how you make a mermaid leg warmer. Now, keep in mind, you can make this in a different cage. You can, um, you want to do it in increments of four, for sure. Okay, because you know what I started out with, and you know what I increased out to. You want to do increments of four. You can keep with a consistent increments of four without the increase out, if you so choose. Now, if you want to make this larger, simply go up and you can do more of these. You just continue the process of doing the scale and then doing the, the lacy area and then doing the stagger, doing the lacy area, and doing the regular, doing the lacy area. And you can do more layers than this. This is a good guide. Okay, um, the basic thing you can do is if you make a sock, you can go up a little bigger. Um, it, it'll probably fit a little better. Um, but in general, this is a pattern that you can, you can elaborate on if you want. Um, because I did this in such a bulky thing and I was doing it for my daughter, it doesn't need to be so big. But if 
you're wanting to make it for an adult, you may want to go to a 40 peg um, loom and or you may want to go to a 48 peg loom on a smaller gauge. Um, say a um, let's say you did a 40 peg loom on um, a half inch or three eighths inch gauge, that would probably do it for you. Um, if you want to do 48 pegs on a 3 8 inch gauge, that would probably do it too. So, um, you don't exactly have to have the X loom, um, because you don't, you don't have to do the increase. You can just do it the same. Just make sure you do the same number of ripping down here as you do up top. And as I said, you can do more scales if you so choose. And so, this pattern is wide open. This is a guide on how to adjust it and make it larger or um, must to make it larger. Okay, so positive, uh, actually that's it. That's how you make a mermaid like woman.